Agriculture on the move. 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 Hello everyone and welcome to the program Agriculture on the Move. I am Philip Sidney, your host. Today with me is Mr. Pius Haynes, who is the acting assistant, assistant chief forest officer. That's a, long word. That's a long, long designation. And he's attached to the Department of Forestry and of course in the Ministry of Agriculture. Welcome to the program, Mr. Haynes. Thank you very much, Mr. Sidney. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Great. Thank you. Mr. Haynes, tell us who you are. What's, what's, what, who is Mr. Haynes? <laughs> okay, so as you've said, um, currently I serve in the capacity of acting assistant chief forestry officer with responsibility for wildlife as well, wildlife management as one of my key designations. Okay. So tell us, what is wildlife management and conservation? Right. So simply put, we could say that wildlife management in its true essence is really the, it's an art and also the science of manipulating and also maintaining wildlife um, habitat and the population and balancing the needs of wildlife with the needs of people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's more or less trying to find a balance between um, nature and humans. So humans, you know, we live um, in a world that is filled with nature and wildlife is part of it. So now we have to try and maintain a certain balance, you know, or more or less a coexistence between um, animals and humans because believe it or not, human beings need those, um, we, we need the biodiversity in order for us to survive. So, but how, how are you, you know, getting involved in that? What, was it a liking? Because I know a number of people out there who have nothing to do with wildlife, especially with those animals that can probably cause harm. So uh, how, how are you getting involved in, in this? Yes, well, I mean, I'm, I work in forestry. So forestry more or less is the agency of government that is responsible for managing conserving and also protecting wildlife and but of course I was um, given the duty of wildlife officer um, back in 2014 mm -hmm. and I have been involved in the work of um, wildlife management from since and also I mean I have gone through you know the study of wildlife um, in some of my courses at school you know um, university and so on so Really and truly, it just um, became my um, portfolio, re really, okay. at Forest. And it's something that you like? Well, yes. I mean, <laughs> we enjoy the, the work of wildlife. wildlife. In fact, the work of wildlife in St. Lucia takes us all around the, um, the country. Mm -hmm. It is not one that, is, that, that will keep you, you know, stationed at one place or in an office. So you have to go to various communities. You have to go to various forest um, types and also different habitats, meet different people and so on. Mm -hmm. And so it's diverse and you know, it's also um, very dynamic. So it's exciting okay. indeed, yeah. So <laughs> when you talk about conservation, let us, let us look, list the species that you are concerned about. Let us start with the birds, okay? What is so important uh, as far as wildlife is concerned with birds and the contribution to the biodiversity? Right. So you ask the question, which more or less, which classes are most important? Um, generally, I mean, all our biodiversity in St. Lucia is important, but really and truly, when we look at the, um, the, the typical wildlife that we manage in St. Lucia, we are, we are looking at classes of wildlife like, you know, the birds, um, the reptiles, mammals, amphibians. Um, we have also beetles. Um, even flies, um, moths and butterflies. 
Um, yeah, so we have, we, we have a huge array of, um, of these different classes. And amazingly, even if St. Lucia is a small island state, in the Eastern Caribbean, we have one of the highest levels of endemic um, fauna within the Eastern Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we have an impressively high um, number of endemic species of birds in particular and the reptiles. Okay. And, but of course, I mean, all of these that I've mentioned, the, the avifauna, the, um, the reptiles and so on, and the others, they just help to condition and they just help to um, enhance the ecosystem functioning and, you know, help to maintain nature, the balance in nature and so on. So believe it or not, um, wildlife play, in fact, they play a very important and a key role in, um, in our very existence, really. Okay. So we may want to discount their importance, but then they are actually very important. Let's, look, let's go back to the <coughs> birds. What, what do you think is the really important uh, role the birds play? I mean, really? Right, so we have different types of birds, really. Um, let me just say that St. Lucia has five endemic bird species. And by endemic, I mean these are creatures that really naturally exist only in St. Lucia. So you wouldn't find these species in other areas in the world mm. existing naturally in the wild, but St. Lucia. So it's endemic to us, it belongs to us. We have five that are endemic, and we have 13 that are endemic subspecies. So they, they're just a lower level, a, small, a, a subgroup of a species. So we have um, five endemic and 13 endemic subspecies. Um, birds play a key role, I mean, in our um, existence, biodiversity, in the um, ecological processes, um, in nature, for example, some birds help with pollination. Okay, for example, the humming, the, the humming birds, mm -hmm. they help with pollination. Um, other birds help in, you know, in, in, in nutrient cycling. Okay, for example, they would eat in one spot and defecate in other spots and so on. And, you know, they help with um, the, the whole um, ecological um, uh, process. In propagation. Um, I mean, they, they just form part of the, 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 the whole um, framework of both flora and fauna. Um, now, not only do they play a very key role in the ecology um, and the different ecological processes, they also play a very key role in you know, our cultural values and also um, our economy. Because, but of course, um, tourists come here for bird watching and bird watching is um, a key feature in ecotourism and so on. Um, and so persons would actually you know, earn or gain a livelihood um, you know, by bird watching tours and, and so on. So, I mean, not only birds, but in our reptiles and all the others, mm -hmm. they play a key role in this whole process. It enhancing our economic um, value, our um, cultural value, and also our um, ecological processes. I remember years ago as a little <laughs> boy, we went hunting birds using catapults and using dizzy guns and whatever it is. Uh, is there an open season and a closed season for the hunting of birds in St. Lucia? Okay, well, the, the, the whole process of managing uh, reptiles, so in fact, managing wildlife generally in St. Lucia, is guided by the St. Lucia Wildlife Protection Act. So we have a piece of legislation, the St. Lucia Wildlife Protection Act, that was more or less instituted in 1980. So, <laughs> so from 1980, we've been we, we have this piece of legislation. Now, back in the days, you know, persons would, you know, would have gone out and used their catapult and all, you know, other devices in the forest reserve. And you know, they would hunt and do all kinds of things. But um, this has changed, really. Mm. So um, you would actually need a permit to be able to undertake such, such activities. Um, and so uh, we would have to be guided by the Wildlife Protection Act. Um, animals in the Wildlife Protection Act are subdivided into groups. So you have, um, you have fully protected wildlife under Schedule 1. You have partially protected wildlife under Schedule 2. And then you have unprotected wildlife in Schedule 3. And um, currently, we more or less have a, a moratorium on, on, on the hunting. But then there is also a need for us to do some legislative review as it relates to the, the Wildlife Act, so we can update it, so we can, you know, um, make it more modern, and we could help, you know, we could help it to, um, we, we could more or less adopt it to suit our um, current needs, 
Okay, so the aspect of um, an open and a closed season, it's already there um, for partially, partially protected wildlife. And so we would have to, um, you know, reinstitute it, you know, so that we could have, you know, help support livelihoods and we could help, you know, manage some of our um, um, animals and so on. So there are specific species of birds that can be hunted for? If, if and when the season is open, is it something that is a pub public knowledge? The, the majority of our birds um, are listed as protected wi um, wildlife. Oh. So th the majority of them are listed on the Schedule 1, the vast majority of them. Um, but provisions could be made um, for even case, for if, for instance, if we have um, a certain species of bird that is, you know, you know, the population is extremely large and it's, 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 it's out of control and so on, mm -hmm. then provisions could be made um, for a certain uh, approach for management mm -hmm. in that regard. Okay. So uh, I know there are some time during the year, you have migration of birds coming to, in this country. Um, are they, can they be hunted? I mean, I know there are ducks coming in, am I right? Yes. So, um, yeah, so we have birds coming in um, from, the, um, from North America, more or less. Um, during the winter times, you know, they escape the winter and they come here, they, they forage, you know, they... And these birds, these are, well, they, we refer to them as migratory bird species. And, but of course, they would form part of the, um, the avifauna mm. of St. Lucia. They would be part of the, um, the birds that actually um, use St. Lucia as, you know, as part of their range as a habitat. Okay. Um, so we have birds like, you know, the um, teals, like orange, sorry, we have blue winged teals, we have um, the green winged teals, we have um, ducks and so on, especially coming down at the bright pond and so on. And um, in order for persons to, um, it, it is not legal for persons to just go ahead and hunt these okay. birds, okay. okay? They would need a permit from forestry in order to do so, okay? okay? Um, because, I mean, those birds are coming here for a specific reason. They are coming here to escape the winter. They come in here to forage. They come in here, um, some, um, in some other countries, you know, they actually um, reproduce and so on. So if you were to go about hunting those birds indiscriminately, then we more or less, um, you know, destroying the, the species. Okay. Uh, I know there are quite a few other animals that you will speak about as far as hunting is concerned, as far as um, those animals that are not supposed to be hunted, not supposed to be killed, uh, but we'll do for our first break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Hey, but that was... Bio means life. Biodiversity is a variety of life all around us. All plants, animals and microbes and the places where they live. We need to protect biodiversity so that we can continue to enjoy all the resources it provides. Fresh air, clean water, food, clothing, shelter, and recreation. Biosafety ensures that we protect biodiversity against any negative impacts of GMOs while using it safely for national development. For more information on the Biosafety Project and how you can be involved, Call 451-8746 or 722-9252. Log on to lc.biosafetyclearinghouse.net or join the mailing list SLU Biosafety at govt.lc. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture and the Move on with me, Mr. Paz Hins from the Department of Forestry. Paz, there are so many other uh, species that we can we should be, be discussing, but one of the main ones I think, I think that has um, come to the fore recently are the reptiles. Mm -hmm. um, I see people posting a number of, of um, reptiles. Um, the the, the, uh, the, the non-venomous -ven ones, you know, and others. Uh, so tell us about the various uh, types of reptiles we have in St. Lucia. Okay, so uh, in St. Lucia, we have approximately 19 different species of um, reptiles, believe it or not. Um, seven of these reptiles are endemic and five are endemic subspecies. So we have more or less 12 of our reptiles that are endemic. Um, so in terms of the different classes, we have anoles, like you know, those tree lizards. Uh, we have geckos, 
Um, we have ground lizards, like in the case of the whiptail lizards and the, um, the worm lizard. We also have iguanas and we have the snakes. Okay, so um, the ones that seem to be causing um, most fear to our, um, to the public more or less are the snakes. Okay, so we have four different snake species. We have the St. Lucia boa or the Tetche, which is the largest snake that we have on island. And um, well, the boas typically grow up to about, about eight feet on average, eight feet long on average. Um, then we have the second largest, which is the Fedelus. And I must say that the Fedelus is the only venomous snake that we have on island. And then we have the St. Lucia racer. And the St. Lucia racer is the snake that you find. It is only found on Maria Major in Vieford. That is the only place in the world where you're going to find this snake. It is, in fact, labeled as the rarest snake in the world. And then we have the thread snake, which is more or less a, a very small snake. It is the second smallest snake in the world. And it is more or less, more or less the size of an earthworm. <coughs> okay, and now the majority of these um, reptiles, believe it or not, we find them on Maria Major. That is why Ma Maria Major is such, in fact, the Maria Islands, that is why they are of such great importance for biodiversity conservation. In fact, we even have some reptiles that are endemic even to Maria Islands, mm -hmm. like in the case of the St. Lucia pygmy gecko, St. Lucia racer as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually, I mean, sorry, initially you'd have found a racer on the mainland, but because of, you know, the introduction of um, invasive predators, like for example, the mongoose and so on, we have a lot of, um, they were, the races on the mainland were more or less uh, extinct or extirpated, and now they're only on Maria Major. <laughs> what are the challenges of conservation of these reptiles? All right, so, I mean, the challenges are many. The list is, is, is long. But if we had to prioritize, which, if, if you were to ask me which are the biggest um, threats or the challenges that we face with regards to um, conservation of reptiles in particular, and generally wildlife on a whole in St. Lucia. The number one species, in fact, the number one factor I'd say would be the um, invasive alien species. Okay, and by this I mean these are exotic animals, animals that do not naturally exist in St. Lucia. They were more or less introduced for one, one reason or the other. And with regards to reptiles, invasive predators play a very, very, very um, devastating role as it relates to um, the loss of our reptiles. So we find that there are a number of um, predators that actually attack our um, local reptiles. For example, we have um, the first one I'd say is the mongoose. Mongoose is a really formidable predator that really attacks iguanas, it attacks even um, um, baby snakes and so on, lizards. Whatever mongooses get, they will eat. In fact, mongooses are implicated for the, um, the loss of the St. Lucia racer on the mainland. Because we, we initially had racers on St. Lucia's mainland, mm -hmm. but because of the introduction of mongooses, you know, um, then they are confined to Maria. Apart from mongooses, we have rats. Okay, rats also um, can devastate our reptiles, in particular birds and so on. And, um, this is why on the offshore islands like Maria Island, Prale Island, Rat Island, we have established a biosecurity uh, mechanism where we have bait stations that actually um, do three functions. They would actually um, prevent the entry of rats and so on onto these offshore islands. And they would actually um, um, do eradication one time. So we have bait that will take care of any rats that were to come on these offshore islands. So going back to the, um, the, the threats, so apart from mongooses and the rats, then we have a lot of um, problems with stray dogs, stray dogs and cats, especially within this um, St. Lucia iguana habitat. So stray dogs, um, they actually attack the female iguanas when they come to nest because they nest in, in, on, in the sand on the beaches like, for example, the beaches on the, um, the northeast coast and so on. And so even before the iguana lays its egg or burrow uh, into its nest, the dogs would attack and kill it. 
And so generations of iguanas have been lost. You know, we lose a lot of um, genetic diversity in that way. Cats as well do the same. Cats would eat lizards, they would eat the baby iguanas, you know. Um, and then, so we, we have to control these invasive species. So I mentioned the mongooses, the rats, the cats, the dogs. Um, and we have a number of others. We have feral pigs as well. Um, and so these are some, in fact, these are some of the major challenges that we face. The other major challenge, apart from um, the invasive species and the predation, is one of um, habitat displacement. Also, you have the threat of um, the the threat of hybridization. For example, we have the green iguana that is an invasive species in the Sufre Basin. That green iguana can compete with our native St. Lucia iguana, and they could even cause hybridization because if you have the invasive green iguana mating with the St. Lucia iguana, you have a hybrid, mm -hmm. and that would change the genes and change the whole um, species. And we don't want that because that has implications for um, conservation, for funding, and so on. Okay. I notice, uh, well, history, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they brought in the Mongols to take care of the, 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 the snakes. snakes. Yes. But mm -hmm. if you notice, I notice the, the, there's uh, 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 the population of snakes, especially the venomous one, is increasing. So um, is, is, that, is that so? And uh, if, if, if it is so, um, I also know, um, maybe you, again, you can guide me in that direction. Some years ago on our books, the laws, um, you could go in and, and, and kill a, 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 a snake, and of course you bring, you bring the, the head to the, to the police station and you're compensated. Mm -hmm. You know, where's that law now, and, and whether, mm -hmm. you know, in fact there is a proliferation of, um, of, 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 of snakes on island? Right, so um, with regards to the, um, the introduction of those mongooses, yes. Those mongooses, rats and so as well, these invasive species were introduced, um, you know, during the times of the um, transatlantic slave Slavery. trade, you know. Um, the Europeans brought these in. Um, they thought that the mongooses would have taken care of the snakes. Um, currently, we have not done any, um, any survey, population survey, to really ascertain or determine the true population of the St. Lucia um, Federalis or even the boa. Uh, it is something that we, we, we are yet to, um, to do. We need to you know, get down to the truth. Because um, whilst we may be seeing that the, there are increased sightings of either the boa or the federalans, then there may be factors within the habitat that might be causing that. And um, we need to do the, the, the research to determine whether it is as a result of a population increase or is it because of something else. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm saying that is because um, in our forest reserve we have feral pigs. And those feral pigs um, are known to predate or eat snakes. So even if they were to get a feral they would eat. If they were to get a boa, they would also eat and so on. And so we find that in areas within the forest reserve where we see the presence or we, we, uh, we, we see signs of, of feral pigs, we hardly get snakes there. So that could be one of the factors that you know, causes the snakes to go. Instead of being in the forest reserve, mm -hmm. then they pushed out in the periphery. And as a result, you know, you, you might see them more in the communities and so on. Okay. Also, um, I mean, going back to your question, um, the, right, so the snakes in particular, um, like in the case of the, the, the Federalists, um, as I've said, we've not really done much of the research in terms of the population. Um, but currently, the Federalists is listed as unprotected wildlife. Okay. okay, the Federalist by law, based on our law, it is not regarded as a protected species. All the other snakes, like the, the boa is protected, the racer is protected, the thread snake is also protected. And um, back in the day, I mean, before, um, you know, um, we knew more and so on, or before we were, we were perhaps less sensitive to conservation, then yes, there was this bounty that was um, placed on the head of the, the Federalist. So persons were being, you know, paid a few cents, you know. So is, is that still in, in, there um, in our books? Well, the books more or less needs to be um, updated. updated or <laughs> amended. That is, that is why I'm saying that there's a call for legislative review. Okay. But in, I mean, that thing is, is so archaic now because mm -hmm. just a few cents, I'm not quite sure how much in particular, but then it's only a few cents that were um, issued yeah, a few cents, yeah. for that purpose. Okay. Um, so as it stands, the Federalist is still listed as unprotected wildlife. Okay. Um, 
and so the yeah and and it is the only venomous snake that we have in terms of public <laughs> sensitization in terms of knowing the difference uh, and notice you you have a container there uh, how do you know the dif the difference between the the tetchi and uh, the, the the venomous snake right so right so the, as i've said the tetchi and the 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 featherless, they, they're the two biggest snakes that we have. The tetchi is the biggest one, and um, the featherless is the second biggest. Um, there are three, three criteria that I would say we could use to broadly distinguish between one from the other. Looking at the head features on both the featherless and the boa, looking at the general coloration of the skin and the skin pattern is another one. And the other key one is the, um, the tail, the tail features. Okay. So looking at the head, the, the head of the featherless is more or less rectangular. And it's, it, it, it resembles that of a sphere. That is why they call it fair de las. Mm -hmm. It's more or less like a lance head. Okay. And then the, the boa, the head of the boa is more resembling that of a dog head. That is why they call it tetche. In terms of time, can you, can you yes. show us? And in the skin pattern, the boa has those black and the, the brown. Mm -hmm. And in the featherless has more or less one foam color with, on the skin. And in the, the, the scales on the featherless are rougher. So the featherless skin seems to be a rougher skin. Okay. And, that, and the, 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 the tail in particular, I'm going to show you. The featherless tail resembles that of a rat tail. Okay. It is thin like a rat, but that of the boa is more or less tapering. So okay. it, it, it tapers. Right. Yeah. So you can like go a, ahead. Yes, I can please. show you. Um, this was a boa that we. This was a boa that we rescued this morning mm -hmm. in the Denry area, and <clears throat> don't stand up too much. Right. Mm -hmm. So the boa. Well, I mean, it would hiss like this. Mm -hmm. I mean. More or less because it's, it, it feels threatened, it feels unprotected. Okay. So let me just show you the, the, the skin features. All right. I can see it from there. Right. So you, you could see the, you could more or less see the, um, the tail of mm -hmm. the boa. Mm -hmm. All right. The right. tail of the boa is, is, it just tapers. All right. But that of the federalist is different. The federalist has a, a thin tail, just like that of a rat. Okay. And you could see the skin pattern of the boa. Yes. It has blackish and brownish, brownish coloration. Brownish coloration around. And yeah. the skin seems to be smooth. Right. But in the featherless, it's different. The featherless seems to have a, a, well, it has a more or less a brownish color all over. Okay. And the, the, the skin seems to be rougher. Beautiful. On the, um, the featherless. Yep. And if you look at the head. The head looks like a, like a dog head. If you look at the head here. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it, people. <laughs> the 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 the, um, the boa, as it relates, and of course the difference. We didn't have the the um, the featherless because I think it's a bit difficult to bring the yeah, featherless. The featherless is more challenging. It's more yeah. challenging to manage. Yes. The featherless is is venomous, so you have to have more more stringent protocols to have the featherless here. Any final words from you, just yes. as we close? Right. So basically, I just would like to um to emphasize the importance of our um, biodiversity, um, our wildlife in St. Lucia. Our, we have some very unique um, wildlife in St. Lucia as it relates to reptiles and birds. We get requests for, you know, um, research from, you know, all agencies, international agencies, you know, all over the place. And so um, it, it, it would be um, important that we, we learn to appreciate our um, wildlife and also to learn more about them. We, we would have to be, um, we have, we'd have to educate our public okay. more about our wildlife so that, you know, they can better understand the wildlife and that, you know, by so doing, they can better coexist in order for us to have a higher and a better quality of life. Thank you, Mr. Piles Hills. And I'm hoping that we'll continue to maintain and to ensure that there's, there can be this coexistence between human beings and our animals yeah. and our flora. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. You've been watching Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. And remember, agriculture our business. Stay tuned. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move. Agriculture on the Move.
Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move. Agriculture on the move.